Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Uh, today's title, uh, call it the power of fasting. Call it the power of fasting. All right. All right, give me Psalms chapter 90, and I want verse 1. Psalms chapter 90, verse 1. Start right there. The book of Psalms, chapter 90, and verse 1. Come on. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Mm -hmm. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. That's actually very, very, very heavy. All right. Uh, so actually, this is a prayer of Moses. All right. I actually, actually saw that right there. It's a prayer of Moses. All right. He says, Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. So that's heavy in itself. Okay. He says in all generations. All right. Then he says, verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hadst formed the earth. Showing what? He understood that his spirit was with the most high before the earth was created. Okay. That's what he's saying right there. All right. Read on. Verse 3. Come on. Thou turnest man to destruction. All right. So he says, thou turnest man to destruction. Read. And sayest, return. Ye children of men. Right. That's what regeneration right there. OK, he says, all right, he destroys man. And what he says to send that spirit back to the earth. That's exactly what it does. OK, read on. Verse four. For a thousand years and thy sight are but as yesterday mm -hmm. when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. Read. They are as a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass, which groweth up. Which groweth up. All right. So our lives are in the hands of the Most High God. All right. He can destroy us. He can bring us back. He can do whatever he pleases. Read on. Verse 6. In the morning, it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening, it is cut down and we're with. Right. So one day you're born and then once your, your time is up, then you what? Pass away. Come on. Verse 7. For we are consumed by thine anger, mm -hmm. and by thy wrath are we troubled. Verse thou, 8. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Right. It says thy secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Meaning, it may be secret to men, right? But it's not secret to the Most High. He knows exactly what we deal with on the daily. All right. We're going to finish this, but give me Acts 17 real quick. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 17, and verse 30. Actually, 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 give me Jeremiah 5, and then we're going to read Acts. All right? Give me Jeremiah 5 and 25, and then we'll read Acts. Yep. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, and verse 25. Come on. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have have withholding good things from you. Right, it says, and our sins have withholding good things from us. Meaning what? When we make, when we uh, commit these acts, our sins separate us from the Most High. Okay, now go to Acts 17 and 30. All right, so now we fast forward into the day and age that we're living in right now. Okay, we understand that the Most High God, he is in control of what? Life and death. He witnesses death. The sins that we think are secret, we understand that sin separates us from God. Now watch this, Acts 17 and 30. The book of Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. 
It says, in the time of this ignorance, God winked at these sins that we have committed. All right. So, for example, um, how can you say sometimes you may have two brothers that commit the same act, meaning they could have robbed a bank. Right. But the police show up, kill one and the other one lives. OK. There's been many different uh, examples in the scriptures or whether or not we've known someone. A lot of us roll with people who are dead now. That could have been us, right? Why did God kill one and why did God spare the other? All right, read it again. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. Right, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at those sins. Meaning what? We've made it to this point. Meaning God could have destroyed every last one of us, right? At any point in time when we was in the midst of our sins, right? All right, read. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. But now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. All right. So with that being said, when you when you read the book of Ezra, it was what, 1030, right? It was 1030 in regards to the clock of the, uh, you know, Esau, they have their, um, what's it called? Doomsday clock. Right, right. So. In Esau's frame of mind, they know it's getting really, really close to midnight. That's 12, right? So when Ezra was speaking to uh, Uriel, it said that the clock was what? At 1030. That's right. Se yeah, give me, I'll, I'll pull it. Second Ezra 14. Yeah, that's correct. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 10. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 10. Yeah. For the world hath lost his youth and the times begin to wax old for the world is divided into 12 parts. So it says the world is divided into 12 parts the same way uh, that you see on a clock. Right. Read on. And the 10 parts of it are gone already. Right. So this is during the time of Ezra. OK. This is during the time of Ezra during the Persian Mede captivity. OK. Read on. And half of a tenth part. And half of a tenth part. So that's ten and half of a tenth. So that's what? That would be the 30, right? 1030, read. And there remaineth that which is after the half of the tenth part. Meaning what? Technically, it would be an hour and a half left from the time of Ezra. So was Ezra uh, around yesterday? No. He was, he was around thousands of years ago. Okay. Now go back to Acts 17 and 30. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. Come on. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. It says now commandeth man everywhere to repent. So think about it. Our forefathers, when Christ came, what did they think he was going to do? Let me see. Uh, David, what did our forefathers think that Christ was going to do when he came on the earth? On the Shalom leadership. Shalom. I want to bring the kingdom. Yeah, they thought that Christ was coming to bring the kingdom at that time because they could see the way the world was going. You had a certain nation by the Rome by the name of the Romans who rose up into power. Okay? Um, our forefathers understood the scriptures. They understood that thing. Give me that in second Ezra. You know what I want? You saw the end of the world. Give me that. Six and nine. The book of First Ezra, chapter six. Second, oh, second. Second Ezra, chapter six, and verse nine. Mm -hmm. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Right. So think about it. Our forefathers saw the Romans who were living in Jerusalem. Think about it. And then Christ comes doing miracles. So they're like, "Hey, we're about to be up out of here." So understand the i guess the urgency or the gravity or the magnitude of what's actually being said and try to put your put yourself in their shoes so ezra said 10 30 uh right here in acts we read in what says the time is right now you understand so now it's 2020 so it's probably more closer than we ever thought right like it says in let's go to romans 13 real quick Romans uh, 13 and I think it's like 11 on I think it's 13 13 and 13 yeah that's it the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 13 uh no it is 11 read 11 
the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Uh -huh. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Read. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Right. The forefathers are saying that during the time of Romans. So now in 2020, we got to scratch the head and be like, damn, this is the time where we got to fix it, fix it. You understand? All right. So let's go to um, the book of Tobit, chapter 12. For, read verse 8. The book of Tobit, chapter 12 and verse 8. Come on. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. All right. So we're going to break this thing down real quick. So we understand what now's the time to really, really get it right. According to the, the clock, the doomsday clock in the scriptures. OK, so the Bible is saying prayer is good with fasting. OK, that's a good combination. It says and alms. All right. So whether it be monetary or financial alms or whether it be alms deeds of what you do in the body. Right. A lot of brothers and sisters don't get that. Just keeping the Sabbath or the new moons. That's not good enough. OK, what are we reading? We're reading this from the forefathers It's saying prayer is good. Then you got fasting. But then it says and alms and the keeping of commandments. So that's four things that you must do. A lot of people just think that the righteousness is good enough. That's not good enough. Just keeping the commandments. That's not good enough. It's, the Bible just told you that. It says you also have to pray. It says you also have to fast and give alms, whether it be financially or putting your brick to support this, this truth. Go ahead. Yeah, Cal, that's, that's, that's heavy what you're saying. That's like saying, uh, I want to do as little as possible. All I need to be is a doorkeeper. When I make it to the door. door well, the scripture does say it's all right if you're a doorkeeper. So In keeping the law and doing all the things that is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the concept of doing as little as possible and thinking you're going to make it, it's not going to happen. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, a lot of us thinking um, all you need to do is just keep the laws. No, that's not all. Think about what the scripture tell you in Isaiah 49 and 6. It says it is a light thing that you must be his servants to wake up the 12 tribes. How are we going to go about waking up the 12 Hold tribes? Hold on. What does that mean, Simon? Somebody read Isaiah 49 and 6. And then give him the microphone. What does that mean? Because I know we read it. I don't think brothers understand what that actually means. It's a precept to answer. What are y'all doing out here? Give me Isaiah 49 and 6. They just know it because that's the answer. I don't think brothers know what that means, though. So we're going to find out. Read it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 6. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. And to restore the preserve of Israel. What does that mean? Uh, shalom, leadership. Shalom. All right. So, yes, sir. He says it's a light thing that uh, that we should be his servant and wake up the 12 tribes of Jacob. So uh, he, w he was saying that uh, it's not grievous uh, to wake up the 12 tribes. Like, meaning, like, when we go out there, we, we can never do enough. Even when we go hard as we can, we can't never do enough. Mm. Uh... Yeah, soldier, let me hear you. Shalom, leadership. Uh, basically saying it's like, it's the least we could do. is Right, the, the least, least. Yeah, we yes. could do more. Basically, uh, us waking up our people, that's like the bare minimum. Like, we could do way much more. That's, that's what it's saying right there. So a lot of brothers and sisters alike, I don't think we understand that, for example, you know the brothers that go risk hazard their lives for the truth, like every week, that's still nothing. You understand? That's and then and then on ret in retrospect, you got some brothers and sisters who don't do even do that. This is this is what we're trying to tell the people and get y'all to understand. Hey, now's the time to start doing as much as you can because who's to say that you're even gonna make it to the day of the Lord, right? We don't know when we're gonna make it. We could be called, well, hopefully home, right? Hopefully called home before that day comes. But you never know. All right. Uh, read this verse again. Verse six. Come on. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. All right. So that would be another class. So I'm, I'm going to come back. So let's go back to Tobit 12 and 8. And we're just going to focus on one of these, one of the four. 
We're going to focus on one of the four today just to show you the strength in what? Living a godly life, right? Righteousness, we know that. That's the reasonable service. We get that, all right? But now we're going to focus on fasting today. All right, give me verse 8, Tobit 12 and 8. Come on. The book of Tobit chapter, chapter 12 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It says a little with righteousness is better than much without righteousness. With, with unrighteousness, excuse me. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. You know how heavy that is? The Bible just said it's better to do the work of the Lord than worried about picking up overtime shifts. You understand that? God just said that. He said it's better to put your brick here and build up this kingdom than to worry about the things of the world. A lot of brothers and sisters don't understand that. So Lord's will, Lord's will that helped you, okay? Go to Deuteronomy. Now we're going we to get some examples. Remember, we're focusing on fasting. So, yeah, I'm going to teach a class next week about that other stuff we was just talking about. All right? That's what we'll do. Give me um, Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 7. Let's read about the forefather Moses. All right? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 7. Come on. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. From the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Also in Horeb, ye provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, mm -hmm. then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. All right, and we're going to get to this in Ezra as well. But we're stopping right here to show you something. Whenever the Most High God wants to, for example, how can I say this? If we want the Most High to deal with us a certain way, there's certain things that we have to do, okay? If we want to be delivered from certain, uh, how can I say, uh, hang-ups, spiritual hang-ups, like we read before, we want to be delivered from certain sins, all right, so we don't get jacked up, like he said in Psalms 90. So if we want to get to different levels in this truth, understand it's going to take sacrifice. All right, so what are we reading right here? We're reading about the forefather Moses going up to get the Ten Commandments. Now, could he just, not the Ten, but, the, you know, the commandments, the two stones and the statutes and the judgments. Now, if we want the Most High God to use us like he used our forefathers, understand this. It's not going to happen when you living a carnal life, all right? You're going to have to sacrifice and show the most high that you're worth receiving what he has for you, okay? Read that again for me. Read 9 and 10. Verse 9, when I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, mm -hmm. even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I abode in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. He did that for 40 days and 40 nights he fasted or he didn't he didn't have no breath mints he didn't have none of that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to receive something for the nation of israel okay understand that sacrifice but understand the reward what by us receiving those commandments that gave us a chance at life you understand that's our wisdom amongst the nations that's what separates us from everybody else but somebody had to sacrifice to get that thing all right, give me Psalms 22 real quick. Give me the book of Psalms 22. So today's topic is the power of fasting. Showing you what? We read in Tobit 12 and 8. Some of us have a pretty consistent prayer life, right? In Lord's will, we make other classes. Now to be praying, you understand how to focus on that. But some of you pray, and some of you keep the commandments fairly good, okay? But... Hopefully you can understand that that's not good enough. If you want to make it, if you want to really make it and get over certain hurdles, today's class is going to show you that, hey, if you want to go to that next level, you must suck it up and learn to do what? Learn to begin to fast. If you find yourself failing at the same thing over and over again, but there's other struggles in your life that you start to get better at, that's good. That's 
That's uh, Sirach 1724, offending less, right? But then think about what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12. Let's read that real quick. And then we come back to Psalms 22. Watch this. Uh, you know what I want, thorns in the flesh. That's what I want. 12 and, uh, 12 and 7 and 8. Is that it? Yeah, read that. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. Come on. And lest I shall be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. Start at verse 6. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 6. Come on. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. Mm -hmm. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. Read. Or that he heareth of me. Watch this. And lest I shall be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. So this is what? This is spiritual development right here. Meaning what? There's certain things you could just, when you come into the truth, you just put it away. Cold turkey. Like it was nothing. But as you continue to develop years down the road, there's certain things that you realize, damn, for some reason, this thing will not go away. This is like, what? Damn, like, I'm, I know I'm growing. I know I ain't the same person I was at the beginning, but now I've identified that this right here, this is the thing that could take me out because it has not been removed. That's what this class is for. This class is to what? Keep that thing harnessed. Meaning what? You have to deny your flesh in order for that not to be the ruin of you. Okay, understand, everything ain't just going to go away through righteousness. Everything just not going to go away through you putting in bricks. That, I try to tell these brothers all the time. I try to put in as much bricks so I don't be idle because I'm scared to be by myself. So I always want to be doing something. But even that ain't enough. That's what the Bible's telling us. Because sometimes you get caught off guard and then... You know what? I'm going to just chill for a second. Ah, you don't messed up. Now that idleness is there. So what are you going to do to combat that? We're reading about it today. Fasting. That's maybe the thing that was lacking in your walk. So Lord's will, Lord's will, you identify that and make the proper uh, adjustments. All right, let's go to Psalms 22. Psalms 22. And 24, I believe. The book of Psalms, chapter yeah. tw mm -hmm. chapter 22 and verse 24. Start at 22. And verse 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the, in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. Who's, who's the him? It's talking about Christ. All right, read on. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. You see that thing? So the Most High God, he'll listen to us. Uh, I'm not going to go into it because I only got so much time. Um, Bishop bring it out last week. Um, at the beginning, the Most High used to come down and speak to us. Okay. But over time, he said, I'm not dealing with men the same way. Now, if they want to speak to me, they got to cry out. And that's how, what, that's, that's prayer. We have to show the most side that we're worthy of his time, okay? Now, he's saying if we do these things, he'll listen to us, okay? Let's go to 2 Ezra. We're going to go through some examples, all right? I may cut some of them short, but it is what it is, all right? Give me 2 Ezra chapter 3. I want you to start at verse 1, read down to 4. All right, make sure you take notes. All right, the power of fasting, meaning what? If we want to get to the next level, if we want the most high to deal with us and remove certain things, we're going to have to sacrifice. All right, read what you got. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh-huh. In the 30th year, after the ruin of the city, I was in Babylon and laid trouble upon my bed, and my thoughts came up over my heart, mm -hmm. for I saw the desolation of Zion and the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon. And my spirit was sore moved, so that I began to speak words full of fear to the Most High. Come on. And said, O Lord, who bears rule, thou spakest at the beginning, when thou didst plant the earth, and that thyself alone, and commandest the people. Right, saying the same thing what Moses said. We read that in Psalms, the 90th chapter, right? All right, jump to uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. 
Chapter 4 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer. And so he, he cried out in chapter 3. Now here's the answer because he cried out to the Father. All right, read on. Verse 2. And said, Thy heart hath gone too far in this world, and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High? Right. So Ezra, he was beside himself. He was also from the tribe of Levi, if y'all didn't know. Okay? Read that verse again. Verse 2. Come on. And said, Thy heart hath gone too far mm -hmm. in this world, uh -huh. and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High? Verse 3. Then said I, Yea, my Lord. And he answered me and said, I am sent to show thee three ways and to set forth three similitudes before thee. All right. So he said he's, he's sent to talk to him. Basically, to, to stump him and show you ain't, you're not on that level. But we ain't going to read all that today. But jump up to verse 49. Verse 49. Mm -hmm. After this, there passed by before me a watery cloud and sent down much rain with a storm. And when the stormy rain was past, the drops remained still. Then said he unto me. Uriel said unto uh, to Ezra, read. Consider with thyself. As the rain is more than the drops, and as the fire is greater than the smoke, but the drops and the smoke remain behind. So the quantity which is past did more exceed. Read. Then I prayed and said, May I live, thinkest thou, un until that time, or what shall happen in those days? Right, happen in those days. So this is going into the end. He asked, in a sense... Because I'm not, we're not going there. This is this is not that class. So he asked, he said, "Who are sealed? Okay, is it more that's already came and gone, or is it going to be in the latter days?" The angel said, "The majority that have been sealed, they're already dead and gone." That's what he's that's what he's saying right there, comparing it to the rain. All right, read on. Verse fifty-two. Uh huh. He answered me and said. As for the tokens whereof thou askest me, I may tell thee of them in part. Mm -hmm. But as touching thy life, I am not sent to show thee, for I do not know it. For I do not know it. Now, when it comes to Ezra, when you read it, he's very, very inquisitive. Like he, he has a hunger and a thirst for knowledge. So what happened, he keep, keeps talking to the angel. So the angel says, all right, if you want to know this, this, and that, all right, you got to you got to fast for that. You understand? That's the that's the uh, back and forth conversation that's taking place. All we doing is jumping. So your job is to read it yourself. All right. We just jumping. Hey, all God. right. I'm yes. Not gonna, yes. I'm not going to bring out scripture. Go ahead. Uh, something I'm, I'm, I'm going to say in regard of Ezra as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that the angel did figure out about Ezra, he was not someone who was all about himself because they uh, the angel had to test at him to see if he was all about himself. And then, fair enough, he he was showing that he care about the people. He care about his people. All right, go ahead, Cal. All praises. Thank you. Thank you. All right, read, verse, read that. Chapter 5, verse 1. Come no. on. Second Nezer, chapter 5, and verse 1. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold, the days shall come, that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden. And the land shall be barren of faith. Come on. But iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. All right, stop. All right, from there, jump down to 12, verse 12. Verse 12. Come on. At the same time shall men hope, but nothing obtain. They shall labor, but their ways shall not prosper. To show thee such tokens I have leave. And if thou wilt pray again and weep as now and fast seven days, thou shalt hear yet greater things. Right. So he came down. He, he prayed, right? He prayed to the father. The angel came down and dealt with him and showed him some stuff. But the angel said, he said, all right, if you want to know more, this is what you got to do. You got to cry out and now you got to fast seven days. Because this type of information, this understanding, it's just not going to be given to you. You actually have to show that you want it. All right, read on. Verse 14. Then I awaked, and, and excuse me, and an extreme fearfulness went through all my body, and my mind was troubled, so that it fainted. So the angel that was come to talk with me held me, 
com- comforted me and set me up upon my feet. Come on. And in the second night, it came to pass that Selethiel, the captain of the people, came unto me, saying, Where hast thou been? And why is thy countenance so heavy? Read. Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. 20, 20. I'm sorry, 20. Verse 20. And so I fasted seven days, mourning and weeping, like as Uriel the angel commanded me. And after seven days, so it was that the thoughts of my heart were very grievous unto me again. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding. And I began to talk with the most high again. Meaning what? Sometimes if anybody in here is spiritual, you know what I'm talking about. If you're the devil, you're the devil. I don't care. But you should understand if you ain't, you can feel when you're not right with the most high. If you're spiritual in any form or fashion, you should be like, you know what? I'm out the damn spirit and I need to get myself right. You understand? Some of us fast, and if you're not on that level yet, you try to, what, be around the brothers, be around the sisters, do things to get back on the side of the most side. So he's saying after those seven days of denying his flesh, he felt like he was in the spirit again. Now he could deal with the most side. So why are we reading these examples? We reading this so we can apply it in our lives today. All right? When it comes to those, um, those sins that separate us from the Father, you understand? If we want to overcome those or if we want to even stay in the truth and make it to the day of the Lord, this is what we must do in order to get to that next. How can I say that next level to get to the next level? Now, let's jump. Let's drop that example. Let's go to the book of Judith. Let's read about the foremother for you sisters. All right. Give me Judith, the eighth chapter. Okay. All right. The power of fasting. All right. Uh, Read what you got. Start at verse one for me. The book of Judith, chapter eight. And verse one, Come on. now at that time, Judith heard thereof, which was the daughter of Mar- Mariah, the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Uziel, Oziel, excuse me, the son of Elkai, the son of Ananias, the son of Gideon, the son of Raphim, the son of Akaido, the son of Eliu, the son of Eliab, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Samuel, and the son of Salasadai. Sel- the son of Israel Come on. and Manessus was her husband of her tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. Barley. In, in the ma- barley harvest. In Florida, we say barley. Okay. Tri- verse two, read it again. Verse two. And Manessus was her husband of her tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. Read on. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field. The heat came upon his head, and he fell on his bed Come on. and died in the city of Bethulia. And they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothim and Balaam. Balamo. Okay. Balamo. So we see here what? The, the death of Judith's uh, husband. All right. That could be very hard, hard pill to, sw- uh, pill to swallow. All right. She was, of course, in pain and sorrow. So let's find out how she, she, how she dealt with things. Read on. Verse 4. So, Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. Come on. And she made her a tent upon the top of her house and put on sackcloth upon her loins and wore her widow's apparel. Read. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood, save the eyes of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths and the eaves of the new moons and the new moons. And the feast of so- and solemn days of the house so of Israel. So verse 6, it says, and she fasted all the days of her widowhood, showing you what? Being a widow is not an easy thing to go through, okay? She was in subjection to her husband. She lost her husband. So she knew in order to get through this trial, she had to be what? In the spirit and close to the most high. In fact, to the point where she fasted all the days, meaning it says, except the eves of the Sabbath, meaning what? That's a day of preparation, right? She didn't fast on the eve of the Sabbath. It says, and the Sabbath. She didn't fast on Fridays and Saturdays, okay? Then it says, and the eves of the new moon. So the, uh, let's say the new moon was Thursday, right? So she didn't, she didn't uh, fast on Wednesday and Thursday. And then it says, and the new moons, and the feast and solemn days of the house of Israel. So on average, let's just say it's a normal week without any um, new moons or tabernacles or anything like that. She fasted on average five days a week. 
That's what she did. She fasted an average of five days a week so she could be in the spirit. All right. And when you read, um, when you read, give me verse 29. Verse 29. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. Why you think Judith has so much wisdom? Why you think? Think about, think about what we read in Ezra. Why you think Ezra was getting all that stuff revealed to him? Why? Because he was sacrificing. He was, he was fasting to the Lord, asking for that wisdom. The same thing with the foremother. Okay, now jump down to verse 31. Verse 31. Come on. Therefore, now pray thou for us. Because thou art a godly woman. Because Israel was acting a fool at this time. The most I had to put the spirit on Judith because she was the only one that was in the spirit. She had to what? She had to talk some sense into them and they acknowledge, you know what? You a godly woman and you have much wisdom. Why? Because of the sacrifice she did. She on average fasted five days a week. Okay. From there, let's go to the book of Daniel, the 10th chapter. Okay. The power of fasting power of fasting because a lot of people may throw in a towel if they lose their spouse a lot of people they would give up hope but not the foremother she showed a great example all right start at verse one the book of daniel chapter 10 and verse one come on in the third year of cyrus king of persia a thing was revealed unto daniel whose name was called belteshazzar and the thing was true but the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Read. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Daniel was mourning three full weeks. Read. I ate no pleasant bread. He ate no pleasant bread. Come on. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So the forefather Daniel, he fasted for three weeks and cried out to the Lord for three weeks straight. Okay, read on. Verse 4. And in four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedekel, Hedekel, excuse me. Hedekel. Hedekel. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man, clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphat. Who's that, brothers? That's Christ. So showing you what? He got a vision of the Messiah. Why? Why, why, why did that happen? Anybody have a clue? Because he sacrificed. That's how you get to that next level. Throughout the scriptures, that's what it's showing us. If we want to break through, if we want to get over these, these pesky sins, this is what we have to do in order to get closer to the Father. Okay? Uh, read on. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. Come on. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning. Read. And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Come on. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. Hey, remember that. Remember that right there. Read verse 7 again. Verse 7. Come on. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, uh -huh. but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Remember all of that, okay? Read on. Therefore, I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remaineth no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. He had no strength. He couldn't do anything. He was lame. He was limp. Read. Yet heard I the voice of his words, uh -huh. and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, Come on. and my face toward the ground, Read. and behold, a an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and upon the palms of my hands. We, we read that in uh, second Ezra just now, when Uriel got him on his feet, again, alright, read on, let's find out who this is that got him on his feet, read. Verse 11, and he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. Understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Why was he sent? Because he cried out for three weeks straight, and he fasted to the Father, and that's, that's who the Most High sent him. Read. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for... For from this, excuse me, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand 
and to chasten thyself before, and to do what and to chasten thyself before thy God. That's what God's laws do for us. Chasten means to chastise or discipline yourself according to God's laws. So he says during the first day that he began to do that, read thy words were heard. Thy words were heard. So once we decide to what? Discipline ourselves to the most high. He hears what we're saying. But not when we're in the midst of he's not listening to us. Y'all understand that, right? All right, read on. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Come on. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Right. So who's that Michael right there? Who is that? That's the archangel Michael. So in Ezra, it was Uriel. Right here, it's Michael that came to Daniel. All right, from there, let's go to Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts. All right, we almost done. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. I want 51 uh, through 60. The book of Acts, chapter 7 and verse 51. Come on. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Come on. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, Read on. Who, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. Come on. When they heard these things, they were cut to the hearts, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. Who's that right there? I want to see who studies. It says, he being full of the Holy Ghost. Who's the he? Who is that? Uh, I don't want to hear you, Simon. Why is everybody looking at any Bibles? Who is that? Who is that? Who is this talking about right here? Who is full of the Holy Ghost? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your effort. For, yes. This is Stephen. It is Stephen. Read on. Verse 55. Come on. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Come on. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet. And whose, at a what? At a young man's feet. Come on. Whose name was Saul. Read. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Right. So Stephen, before he died, he basically the same thing Christ said. He said, forgive them for they not know what they do. He said, hey, don't worry. They don't know what they're doing. All right. Now, let's read on. We're reading this for a reason. Chapter 8, verse 1. Come on. Acts 8 and verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time. There so was it says Saul was consenting unto his death. This Saul, of course, his name was changed to Paul. He was OK with the stoning of Stephen. All right. Read. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Come on. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. He made havoc of the church, meaning what? He was robbing people, uh, taking them to prison. Because we say raw, because when you take somebody to prison... Their house is left unkept. What do you think happened? They came in and took the stuff. Okay. Read verse 3. And as for Saul, he made havoc of the church. Come on. Entering in every house, inhaling men and women, committed them to prison. All right. Let's go to chapter 9, verse 1. All right. So we got a little background on the life of Paul. Watch this. Acts 9 and verse 1. Come on. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. And desired of him letters to Dam Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about 
excuse me, shine round about him a light from heaven. Mm, there was a big shining of light. Okay, read. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Come on. And he trembling, and he trembling as astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. It says, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Come on. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And neither did what? Eat nor drink. Because now Paul... He was called for a reason. He had something that he had to do, all right? His ministry was to who? To the Gentiles. So Christ chose him. He hand-selected him and prepared him for what he was about to do, meaning this. Brothers, the most high God, he called us in here to be kings and priests, all right? So we have to do what? We have to be able as up-and-coming leaders to identify the acts of the apostles, the acts of our forefathers, and apply what they've done or what they went through to our present lives. If we want to walk in the same paths, okay? Uh, read that verse again. Verse 9. Come on. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Come on. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul. Now oh. remember, could Paul see right now? No, he couldn't see. Did he eat in the last three days? No. So he couldn't see, and he was weak. Okay, read. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tyrus, or Tarsus. For, behold, he prayeth, and have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Come on. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me Come on. to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Right. So he was a chosen vessel. He had a job to do. But most importantly, understand this. All right. When you fast, understand it's the most high. All right. That's going to be guiding you. He's going to be getting you through that situation. Now, am I saying for brothers who are young in this truth to do a seven day fast or a three day fast off rip? Probably not. Because you're not ready for that yet. But we need to what? We need to get to that point where we're able to do two to three. And I'm not talking about this don't have to be a congregational fast. It could be something for yourself. Okay? Give me that in um, Matthew. You know what I want. I always mess this with Matthew 17. Matthew 17. This is the reason being right here. All right, give me that Matthew 17 and verse 18. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Same thing today. All right. So disciples said, Why couldn't we cast this devil out? Okay. Why can't we overcome certain sins or certain things that plague us on the day to day read because of your unbelief because of your unbelief you don't truly believe in the scriptures and that's it the, there's no way you can get around that how do you show that you believe by your actions okay read for verily i say unto you mm -hmm. if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. It says literally nothing shall be impossible. But some people really don't believe that. Okay. Some of us think that we'll ne certain things that plague us will never get over it. 
And we've convinced ourselves because we actually like doing it. You understand? But he's telling us that nothing will be impossible. Watch verse 21. Verse 21. Come on. How be it? This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. But by prayer and fasting. Showing you what? In order to get to that level, it's a must. This is something that we can't skip. A lot of us do. A lot of us only do it on the Day of Atonement. All right? But God is showing us something. He's like, hey, if you really want to be serious about this walk and get to that next level and stop feeling, you know, whatever way. You know, some people have anger. Some people have depression. Some people have lust that they just can't get rid of. If you want to stop feeling like that, he's saying, here's the solution right here. You may be doing the righteousness. You may put in a lot of bricks. You probably go out to the streets. But that's not good enough. This is what I'm telling you you got to do now to take it to that next level. All right? Let's close with this. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 3. The book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 3. Come on. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Right. So it's time to prove your own self. All right. It's time to see if you're really about what you say you're about. Come on. Verse five. For every man shall bear his own burden. Right. Because there's certain things that you know about yourself that everybody else doesn't know. OK. All of us know what we're capable of, what our shortcomings are. OK. Read that verse again. Verse five. For every man shall bear his own burden. Right. Read on. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Right. So whenever you learn to do better, now it's your job to teach the next man to build him up. Read. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Right. We read that in Psalms 90. Right. We read that in Psalms 90 showing what? The most high God is aware of what we do on the daily. He's also responsible for life and death. OK, what well, Acts 17 and 30 says now is the time to repent. OK, read on. Verse eight, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Come on. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Verse nine. And let us not be weary in well doing. So the Bible says don't get weary in well doing. What is some well doing? Fasting, praying, alms deeds and righteousness righteousness you in the spirit bro all praises and righteousness all right read verse nine again verse nine and let us not be weary in well doing come on for in due season we shall reap if we faint not we shall reap if we faint not all right just think about the four mother judith she knew she was up against something serious so she understood in order for me to make it through this trial so i don't faint i don't get weak she had to fast, all right? We got to do the same things in our lives as well. All right, that's the end of today's class. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.